Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. Company present Captain Midnight. Captain Midnight, brought to you every day, Monday through Friday, at the same time, by the Skelly Oil Company, Skelly Jobbers and Dealers. But first, we have a special message for every fellow and girl who's listening in tonight. First, a message to all members of Captain Midnight's new 1940 Play Patrol. Be sure to listen in for the big surprise announcement tomorrow night. Second, a message to all those who have not yet joined. Be sure to join up right now at your Skelly service station so you'll be ready for all the fun and high adventure that's ahead. And now, my third message. It's for every fellow and girl who lives beyond the city gas main. Listen. Why not ask your dad tonight how he thinks mother would enjoy cooking your Christmas dinner with gas? But how could she do that when you live miles from the nearest gas main? Well, that's easy. With Skelgas. Skelgas, spelled S-K-E-L-G-A-S, is a product of the Skelgas Company, a part of the Skelly Oil Company. Now, Skelgas is not gasoline. It's a rich, clean, natural gas compressed in steel cylinders and delivered to your home by your Skell Gas dealer. It brings all the convenience of city gas service to those who live beyond the gas main. Your Skell Gas dealer is now showing the newest models of beautiful modern Skell Gas kitchen ranges. And he's featuring a sensational free Christmas gift offer. To every family ordering a Skell Gas range before Christmas, he's giving a gorgeous 57-piece set of Barcelona pattern colored dinnerware, absolutely free. Now, this set has sold in leading stores for as high as $14.95. Boy, here's a chance to give Mother the grandest Christmas morning surprise she ever dreamed of. It. Why, think of it. A gleaming Skell Gas kitchen range with all the marvelous pleasure and convenience that will mean and a beautiful 57-piece set of gay colored dinnerware besides. And the dinnerware set won't cost Dad one cent if he orders that Skell Gas range before Christmas. So remember, tell Dad about that swell idea tonight. Two grand Christmas presents for Mother at the price of one. See them both at your Skell Gas dealers tomorrow. And now to Captain Midnight. Events are rapidly drawing close to a thrilling climax. The criminal, Ivan Shark, is preparing a gigantic cattle drive in which the vast parade herd will be stolen and delivered to Senor Lutro. In the meantime, Captain Midnight and Senor Parada have discovered the plot. Now, it's two o'clock in the morning, and Captain Midnight and Senor Parada are discussing what to do when they hear an approaching airplane. The stranger comes closer and then suddenly throttles his engine and glides down to land. Captain Midnight tells Senor Parada to be on his guard, and Senor Parada replies... See me, Capitan. I am ready. I have the gun in my hand. I can't make this out, senor. What can this pilot be up to? It is the big puzzle to me, senor. But this place, it is very good for the airplane to land. Well, that's true enough. But it's two o'clock in the morning. Now, me, Capitan. There he is. Yes, senor, I see him. He's gliding toward the north and will undoubtedly turn and land in the same direction we did. He does not use the landing light, senor. Perhaps he has been here before. Yes, I think that's true. He seems very sure of what he's doing. You are right, senor. The plane... It goes to the north. There, it turns. It is coming back. Yes. Now we'll find out whether he's going to use his landing lights or not. And if he does, he may not land. But why not, senor? He has the intention of landing. Yes, I know that. But if he turns on his landing lights, he'll see our plane on the ground. When he sees it, there's no telling what he'll do. I forget me, Capitan. You are right. If this pilot sees our plane on the ground, he will fly away. We've got to be ready for anything. He's coming close to the ground, senor. He does not use the landing lights. No. I think he's been here before. But, senor, this plane, he will hit our plane. There will be the collision. Well, it's too late to do anything now. After the pilot's on the ground, you'll see our ship. 
That is, when he gets close enough. Look, Senor. He approaches. He will hit our plane. Stand your ground, Senor. We'll stay here until we see what he does. What shall we do, me, Captain? No, he's not going to hit our plane, Senor. See? He's coasting up on the other side of it. Come on now. We'll get down under our wing. Let's see what he does. See me, Captain. Hurry now, Senor. The plane has almost come to a stop. See, si, I am coming. Yeah, there, now he stopped. I think the pilot sees our plane. The pilot? He stays in the cockpit. He does not get out. No. He doesn't know what to make of our ship there. Perhaps there is someone besides the pilot. Yes. And there could be more than two of them. Although I think it's only a two-seater. Look, Senor. The pilot, he rises up when he sees. Yes. He jumps to the ground. Yes, and he's coming this way. All right, now, get your gun ready, senor. All right, strangers, pick him up. Come on, get him up, I say. All right. You got the drop on me. I've got him up. Oh, no, you haven't. I can see only your head against the skyline. Come on, get those hands up now and get him up quick. All right. Now they're up. That's better. Come on, senor. Let's see what we've got here. See me, Capitan. All right, who are you? What are you doing here? I do not see that that is any of your business. In fact, I might ask you the same question. The Capitan, the voice of this man. I have heard it before. So you've heard his voice before, huh? Well, then I know who he works for. See, si, he is the chief pilot for this Ivan Shark. So you recognize my voice, do you? Well, I recognize yours too, Senor Juan Pareda. See, si, you are right, and now... And I can guess who this man is you call me, Capitan. Very well, who am I? You are the one known as Captain Midnight. Keep your hands up. No, I remember. I hear this Ivan Shark call him by name. He calls him Von Grief. Yes, I am Von Grief. Now that we all know each other, we ought to be able to get along very well. You're very much mistaken. Not with you or anyone else working for Ivan Shark. But you see, Captain, I am no longer flying for Ivan Shark. I left him several days ago. I am no longer in his employ. A very clever remark to make under the circumstances. But it is true, sir. Well, if it is, why did you leave him? He was about to cut my throat. I think that's an excellent reason for leaving him, don't you? That is why Why should I... he do that to one of his own henchmen? Because he suspected me of double-crossing him. Were you? Well, I hadn't yet. But you were getting ready to? I had plenty of reason. You would think so if you'd let me explain. I don't doubt it. But I'm surprised that you were able to get away from him. But enough of this. All right. Now you can put your hands down, but no funny business. We've still got you covered. Now, what are you doing here? Come on, quick, out with it. I came here because I have sworn to get even with Ivan Shark. Ah, very interesting. How do you expect to do this? Ivan Shark has a certain plan. I'll let him go ahead. Then at a certain time, I will step in. I see. All right, now stand where you are, Von Grepp, and don't make a move. If you do, I'll shoot. Step back this way with me, Senor Peretta. See me, Capitan. Now, if what he says is true, this is going to complicate matters very much, Senor. But look, me, Capitan. If this man is telling the truth, he can help us. He has the airplane, I will pay him. Money always talks with people like him. Just a second, Senor. This may be another trap set by Shark. Ah, uh, Senor, I did not think of that. Well, uh, if it isn't, he may double cross us, too. As for that, Senor, it is the truth. Uh, look, me, Capitan. I do not see this fellow. Huh? What? Uh, what? Stand right where you are. <laughs> The tables have turned Wait a minute. Now. He's behind our ship. I can tell by his voice. He's not going to trick us. All right, Von Griff. What do you want? Now, I'll tell you. I have made my decision. The presence of you two here will embarrass me. I'll not be able to carry out my plan. Why not, Von Griff? You say you're working against Ivan Shark now? That should place us in the same boat. That may be true, Captain Midnight. But the boat I am in is going in a direction you will not wish to go. Don't move. I know exactly where you are. All right, Von Griff. But I think we ought to talk this matter over. Crouch down lower, senor. See me, Capitan. What are you two whispering about? Nothing at all, Von Griff. But I'll guarantee you it will be much better if we talk things over. Come on over this way, Von Griff. I will tell you what I have in mind. We can do a great deal together if we cooperate. You've moved from where you were, Captain Midnight. Stand still and I will shoot. Now keep quiet, senor. Don't move. Why don't you come on over this way, Von Griff? I can give you some very valuable information, too. Stop or I shoot! No, senor, come on, run for it. That was a trick, senor. He thinks we're on the other side. Now, come on, come on. Stop this! Stop this! 
Ah, that will finish you. <laughs> Wouldn't Darren Sharp be glad to see this? No, senor. Come on, let's get him. Is this some ass? No, oh, we'll get him. I have one grip. You... I know. Oh. Oh. Look, senor. He sinks to the ground. Yes. I think he's out cold. All right, come on. Grab his legs and we'll carry him over to the ship. See, si, senor. That was magnificent. At the same moment, in the circular valley to the south, a different scene is taking place. Chuck Ramsey, Pebbles, and Patsy Donovan are making an inspection tour of the guard post. Let's listen as Patsy says. Gosh, Chuck, I just can't sleep. With Captain Midnight and Senor Parade away, I'm just too excited to be able to sleep. Let me go the rest of the way with you and Pebbles. Mm, all right, but I still think you ought to stay back there in the cave. Oh, please, Chuck, you will tell me more about the flying? I am mucho caliente about it. Jiminy Crickets, what do you mean, Pebbles? Oh, caliente, Patsy. That is the word which means to be very hot. <laughs> I get you, Pebbles. You're hot for flying, huh? Oh, see me, amigo. I also will become the great pilot, like the brave Captain Midnight. I have the great plans. Oh, gee, Pebbles, what are they? Well, we will catch this Ivan Shark, and we will put him in the prison. Then we will all leave at the Hacienda, and we will have the flying school. Oh, gosh, that would be swell, Pebbles. But as soon as we're through here, we've got to go back to the United States. Oh, but no, mi amigos. You should not do that. We have the good field next to the hacienda, and Senor Pereira, he will buy many airplanes. We will fly in the mornings, and in the afternoons, we will play baseball and go hunting. Oh, how dig it to go. <laughs> well, that would be swell, all right. Gosh, I couldn't think of anything more interesting. And anyway, Red has promised us a lot of lessons as soon as he has time. But gosh, Patsy, you know it's impossible. We can't stay down here in Mexico indefinitely. And then again, you can't tell what Captain Midnight might have to do. All right, now quiet you two. We're up at the outpost. That deep ravine is just ahead. Gosh, where's Pinky and Slim? Well, this is the place where Pinky and Slim stay. I, I know it well. Here, I'm going to light my flashlight. Uh, there. Why, look. There isn't a soul around. Oh, that's funny. I can't figure this out. Pinky and Slim were here earlier in the evening. Look on the ground, mi amigos. You see the footprints? And over there, you see the leaves have been pressed to the ground. You're right, Pebbles. One of them must have been lying down there. What could have happened to them, Chuck? Oh, I don't know, Patsy. I don't like this at all. Oh, it's not like Pinky and Slim. They are the very good cards. They do not go away. Listen, Chuck. I'll bet I know what's happened. Yeah, and so do I. There's only one thing that could have happened. Pinky and Slim must have been captured by Ivan Shark's men. Well, what could have happened to Pinky and Slim? And in the meantime, what is happening to Captain Midnight and Senor Pareda? The gigantic cattle drive starts at daybreak in a few hours. Don't fail to be at your radios tomorrow night to hear the next thrilling adventure of Captain Midnight. And also to hear some thrilling news for every member of the new 1940 Flight Patrol. I can't tell you now what the big news is about, but I do know this much. It'll be well worth your while to tune in tomorrow and find out for yourself. And say, you fellas and girls who live beyond the city gas mains, don't forget to tell Dad about the special free Christmas gift offer at your Skell Gas dealers. A beautiful 57-piece set of gay Barcelona pattern colored dinnerware valued up to $14.95 free with every Skell Gas range ordered before Christmas. Skell Gas is spelled S-K-E-L-G-A-S. If there is no Skell Gas dealer near you, drop a postcard to the Skell Gas Company, Kansas City, Missouri, for full information. And don't forget to tune in again tomorrow, same time, same station, for further transcribed adventures of Captain Midnight. Brought to you by the Skelly Oil Company, Skelly Jobbers and Dealers. Can Captain Midnight prevent the big cattle stampede being planned by Ivan Shark? And are Pinky and Flim really in the hands of Shark's men? Be sure to listen tomorrow. Until then, this is Don Gordon, your Skelly Man, saying goodbye and happy landing!